Good evening and welcome to NUFC Matters. And if it sounds like an episode of Blake 7, it's because the missus, as usual, has got the uniforms on spin in the kitchen. And it sounds as if the Liberator is going into battle in some intergalactic war uh, with the Federation. But uh, we will crack on regardless. Mitch's picture is fine now. He was freezing. He looked like he was in suspended animation, uh, which, of course, is from Star Wars. And Steve looks fine, um, as usual, and probably will get compared to some kind of weird character out of another science fiction thing later on in the lookalike. So, anyway, it's good evening. Steve, take yourself off mute, because you are on mute, because I'm going to come to you first. Um, and I've just eagle-eyed, eagle-eyed, I've seen that. Um, yep, there we go. There we go. Um, I'm going to start off. I'm going to, I'm going to start off with Andy Carroll, uh, because I'll forget about it, and I want to talk about it. Newcastle have signed Chris Wood from Burnley, obviously um, upset the apple cart by someone somewhere saying, hey, hey, he's got a he's got a release clause that you can trigger here. But um, I find it staggering that Burnley are thinking about replacing him with Andy Carroll. Now, that's a strange one, don't you think, Steve? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I was flabbergasted. I mean, I saw the goals that he scored or didn't score in midweek. Two cracking uh, goals, or both, both choked off for offside. But... Uh, it, it, I was I was amazed when they said that uh, they were going to be looking to, to use some of that twenty stroke twenty five million pound on picking up Andy Carroll, who's currently allegedly on a thousand pound a week playing at Redden and is quite happy being in the south coast or the south of England uh, with his family. But from a football perspective, um, which Andy Carroll are they buying? Is it is it our Andy Carroll? Is it, is it the West Ham Andy Carroll? Is it the Liverpool Andy Carroll? Is it our previous Andy Carroll? I think we know which Andy Carroll it is. It's the Andy Carroll from Redden who scored one goal in a year. But um, hey, you know, I think this is. I think Mitch is probably going to have something to say about this from a purely financial perspective because what, what we're talking about with Burnley is a football club that got rolled over by new owners who bought them using a scheme that we've we've all condemned and and. And and had a pop at quite rightly as football fans because they bought it on the never never. They loaded the club. They did a they did a reverse takeover or whatever you want to call it. Um, absolutely loaded the club with debt, and it, they're now they've now picked up what is over twenty five percent of the value of the football club that they haven't paid for in cash, no doubt from Newcastle United. Um, and then they're going to pick up Andy Carroll on a free to replace him. God, if I was a Burnley fan, I would be going absolutely out of plectic. Not because they've got rid or they've sold or whatever they want to say about Chris Wood, but because of the way Burnley Football Club is being owned and managed at the moment. Um, it's 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 unbelievable that, that they would even consider going for someone like Andy Carroll when they're sitting on a pot of gold. Because let's face it, 20, 20 Lose a pot of gold uh, for Burnley. Um, like I say, a football club that cost eighty million pound and was bought by loading it onto the onto the supporters in the first place. Absolute scandal. Yeah, yeah. Volume dipped a little bit there. I'm not sure whether that was uh, me or whether something happened there, Steve. We're having a few gremlins in the system tonight. Mitch, we'll come to you. Hopefully, you'll be okay uh, to uh, comment on the Andy Carroll situation and just to find him, just to find him being linked with a move back to the Premiership so quickly after he he didn't really cover himself in glory. And I, I suppose people who would sit on the fence would say, well, actually, he didn't get much game time when he was here second time around. But um, you know, his injury record tells you all you need to know. And as a Premier League player, since he went to Liverpool, he wasn't somebody who, you know, um, played many games in a row. He was not; he wasn't prolific. I just find it strange. I mean, it's none of our business. Having said that, but I guess it sets things nice up because uh, it sets things nice uh, up nicely because they, you know, the. The, the whole talk was of Chris Wood going back to Horn Burnley and, you know, s sending them down the championship. And, of course, it reverses it a little bit, doesn't it? That uh, should it go to the last game of the season, people will now be talking about Andy Carroll potentially sending Newcastle down. Yeah, but, I mean, I think Steve's touched on it for me already. Um, this move is one we should recognise. Sell a striker for £20 million, sign a replacement for free. That should sound familiar. We've been here before. Five million for Muto. Sorry for uh, Josselu. Ten million for Muto. Did that get with Premiership goals? Not really. Um, Andy Carroll for free. Did that get with 
loads of premiership goals? No, not really. Tell you what it did do, put the top of the balance sheet league. <laughs> and and so so you know and and the the way Burnley owners have bought that club, like Steve rightly says, is a, is a way of doing it that's been condemned around the world in terms of football finance, and yet they're still allowed to do it because it flies under the radar in terms of how the owners and directors test works, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that's why our dear neighbours are languishing in League Three. By the way, same thing, and so. It, it's wrong that people are allowed to buy clubs like that. And it's clear intent of what the owners are saying. Um, and it's why people like uh, Southampton, people like, um, oh, who's the other one, Moyes recently at West Ham, because uh, they've got a new part owner. Um, they're both sending clear signals. We're not buying players in January. So we want the rules changed to suit us. And it would be the same with Burnley, I'm quite sure. Um, it, it's interesting to hear how angry they were because um, apparently Trippier and, and him share an agency and, and one wonders does how how did that, that release uh, fee get leaked out um, but we've been doing that in the past ourselves so I'm, I've got no time for anybody cry or something about it at the end of the day um, and people saying that you know taking almost taking the mick and the press out of the signing like I say, did Muto get with a glut of goals at 10 million? No. Did Jocelyn at five? No. What did, what did it actually get with? Nothing really. Um, because we know if you want a prolific striker in the Premier League, somebody who knows the, knows the league and can score goals in the league, you've got to pay decent money these days for it. And and it, it's a refreshing change to see we're actually saying, right, this, is, this isn't necessarily what we want, but it's what we need. And, and looking at the the bigger picture about getting the objective for the next six months is not to get relegated. Then everything else after that comes together. And and so um, I think it's a shrewd signing. I'm glad it's ruffled a few feathers. Quite happy with that. Um, if Carroll's re- his replacement, that says everything you need to know about Burnley's ownership. What about um, these cryptic messages that I've been asked about on Twitter, Mitch? Because there are lots of photographs of players getting circulated by you, Penman, and, and Steve joining in in the fun as well. I was completely oblivious to it because uh, I've, had, I've been up to God knows what this week. I haven't had a great deal of time to be on social media. But um, there was one or two faces getting punted around and rumours. Is, is there anything in them or is it is it speculation? Is it something you've heard? I've said it more openly and I'll say it right now. Um, Newcastle United are more active in the transfer market than we've been in a long, long time. And there are plan A's, plan B's, plan C's. And if one doesn't come off, they'll go to the next one. And they don't care whose feathers are the ruffle. Uh, and they're doing business properly. Um, if you look at the situation with Botman, that's, that's, I think that's going to run to the end of the transfer window. With Botman, we've stuck on the table right now an amount of money that clears their wage bill for the next two years. And in French football at the moment, it's dire. It's as bad as the championship in terms of clubs getting into real severe financial trouble soon. Um, they w- it would be madness to turn that amount of money down, thinking that you're going to get more in the summer window when we know um, the fees are always inflated in the January window. They're playing a very tough game of poker, which is their right to do. And they might want to take that all the way to the end of the transfer window. Equally, we may have other ends in the fire. We we are hearing strong words that the lad at Seville is very, very keen to come and we're very keen to have him. Are oh, we going to take him and then say, right, to Lille, right, you've missed your chance. See you in the summer when we get him for less. Um, or is it all part of Let's play this game right at the end of the transfer window and take it as we can. Where it's just equally our right to turn around and say you're asking for ridiculous money now. Bye bye. You know, I, I gather included in that deal on the table for Botman is the single biggest um, relegation avoidance clause ever <laughs> in a deal. You know, they, 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 they are talking serious money that they really can't. I don't think in their situation they can turn down. Um, I'm still of the belief that Saudi will want 
some sort. I, I don't want to say a marquee signing, but they'll want a name. And they'll want a name that'll get people in Saudi excited because of the way they support football. And they'll want that transfer to come from a big club like Real Madrid or Barcelona or what have you. Because that's the kind of thing that gets Saudi football fans excited. And it wouldn't surprise me if they want to wrap that into a deal somewhere at all. Um, I've heard two or three different potential things. I know in, in this last week, one name's dropped off the radar, um, which I'm, I'm personally kind of glad about. But um, it, it, it would have been a, a statement signing along the way. Um, I think... What it tells us is, is they're very active and they're very active on a number of different fronts. And I don't think they care whether they get their first choice or their second choice. That They're just happy to make sure they get a blend of players in that are going to help take us towards safety. And I think it, it comes down to the blend of the people that we get in. It's absolutely fantastic that we have this kind of buzz and to have this kind of conversation because it's been so long since we've been allowed to have this kind of conversation. You know, we're allowed to have a little bit of dream and we're allowed to have a little bit of fun at the end of the day. Uh, and we haven't had that for such a long time. So it's great to sort of bounce stuff around. Yeah, perhaps we're being a bit cryptic and yeah, perhaps, perhaps we're, we're teasing and yes, and sometimes we are taking the mic as well. Um, <laughs> but it's fantastic to be involved in that kind of chat because... At the end of the day, we haven't had that ability for years. So let's enjoy it where we can. Yeah, this is it. I mean, it, it has been exciting. It's been enjoyable. Uh, there are a few where uh, party poopers mind, uh, Steve, and, and that that's, uh, goes without saying when we talk about Southampton's manager. I watched him again in his press conference today um, going on about the games that are going to be played later on in the season and the players that People sign, not picking any teams, of course, but Newcastle United are one of them, um, that they shouldn't be allowed to play these players. So we shouldn't be playing Chris Wood. We shouldn't be playing uh, Kieran Trippier. I saw a great tweet by somebody this week where they said, hold on a minute, can we not Can we not flip this around and say, well, we should be able to play the players that we couldn't sign in the summer when our takeover should have been allowed to go through? I mean, you know, where do you draw where do you draw the line with this? It, it's ridiculous, and, and why is he making such a big deal about it? Well, I think he's got. I think he's booked his holiday. I think that's the first thing. He's booked his holiday, and he's annoyed and upset that the thought that the season might drag on for another week or a fortnight. I mean, we know that the season can't drag on, but he's he's got his knickers in a twist because. He's that sort of bloke. He's got to let his mouth go. And he's also just been taken over. His club's just been taken over. And do you not get the impression that perhaps he's been told there's no money to spend? Maybe he's thought that there was going to be, if when the takeover happened, that there was going to be a boatload of cash going to land on his table as well. And Or even more so, does he feel as though his club is vulnerable to people coming and poaching some of his players? There's a lot of things goes up, go on in the, in the mind of someone like uh, Husantal or whatever he's called. But quite, quite frankly, I, I couldn't care less what he thinks because the rules are the rules. And, and unless the Premier League are going to start to play stupid again and, and try and change the rules uh, mid-season, then he's... he's He's shouting at shops. He's, he's wasting his time. It, it's not going to happen. You know, the rules state that you sign someone, you can play them. It's as simple as that. I mean, there's always been... I mean, it's only in recent times, whether it's the quality of pitches, whether it's the fact that, you know, under soil heating's come in in places, um, you know, the, the, the fact that we don't have such severe winters anymore, that games don't get postponed. In the past, games got postponed, you know, and... It's it's as though that these guys have got into the mentality that this should be like American football, where regardless of the conditions, you play a game and you have to have week 16, week 17, week 18, week 19, whatever it happens to be, which I find absolutely farcical to begin with. I, I get annoyed when I say that this is game week 16 or game week 18 mentioned by various pundits. You know, it, it, it's pathetic. It's This is a season. It lasts over a period of so many months and the games get slotted in. And when the games take place, that's when they take place. And it's as simple as that. 
Um, so he can shout as much as he likes. Um, he's just turned himself into a fool. And Moyes has turned himself into a fool by following the same sort of tack. And no doubt we'll have exactly the same when it comes to Sean Dyche in a couple of weeks' time, if he's still there. Yeah, Andrew Malloy, we apologise to your four-year-old son for making him cry. Um, I mean, you, I'll, I'll, what I'll have to do is point him towards the uh, the playlist. Get him on, get him on a device, another device in the house. Send him towards the Long Sands playlist that's on my YouTube channel, and he can play them on loop. Play yeah. them on loop. He'll enjoy I'll, them. But I love the album. <laughs> it's well, it's interesting. It's funny that because obviously I'm, I've got my birthday next month, and I'm trying to organise because COVID seems to be on on like hold now. Or Disappearing into the past, I'm uh, I'm going to plan something at, at me local, but at me local, and uh, the Long Sands have agreed to come and do an acoustic, which is great. So, yeah, it's weird that you should mention that, but um, yeah, fingers fingers crossed that uh, COVID does uh, uh, bugger off and we can all get back to some kind of normality. Uh, Burnley Leicester's off, Mitch. Um, COVID again um, hitting hitting the headlines in, in in the sense that there's you know too many players at Burnley got it. Um, just seems like a little bit of a little bit of a coincidence, but this is what's happening, isn't it? I mean, people are taking advantage of this situation now, Mitch, and, and you know why not? And and again, it's it's a game that we we if we can win this game tomorrow against Watford, this proverbial six pointer that everyone's talking about in the chat, um, you know, we are going to be out with the bottom three. Mm, I mean, it, it was there was an interesting point raised by an Arsenal fan on Twitter through the week about uh, Liverpool cancelling their game about that. The squad wasn't big enough, and then showed the program where Arsenal scored like this long and Liverpool scored like this. And you're like, yeah, um, and people are definitely using it. I mean, Klopp, after all of his machinations, to turn around and say, "Oh, a lot of these might be just po- false positive." Oh, bullshit, man! Come on, that that really is taking the piss. Um, it's it, it's going to be used in the way that managers want to use it, and that's fine. Um, as long as everybody understands everybody's playing to the same set of rules, which they are. And that's it, end of that. Um, yes, it means we win tomorrow. We're definitely out of the bottom three. I think that makes a big difference in the mindset of some of the players we might be in discussions with as well. Climbing out of that bottom three just looks better. And, and, and I keep saying how... To, Footballers are often simple souls and it just looks better. Um, and it may change the mind of one or two. You never know. But I, I still i am convinced we'll be in this transfer window right up to the last minute. And deals will happen late, not just the ones that we've managed to, to pop through now. Um, yeah. I know it's, frustra- it's frustrating for everybody. Um, but I think we're now as far away from... Alan Pardew's imaginary line that he could never get anything over. But, um, you know, it will be a very, very different transfer window. And a win tomorrow really does change the game entirely for me. Yeah, it does. Well, hopefully he's going to have a, a special guest on tonight. I'm just going to check and see if he's in his green room. Oh, no, no sign of him. Toon tipster. No. Here we go. Maybe he might jump out that wardrobe at some point. No, he's not there. Definitely not. Definitely not there. Uh, well, he might come back. He might come back one day um, instead of taking the easy route and just you know retiring at such a, an early age. But we'll see. We'll see whether he comes back. Yes, Rachel, over five hundred watching now. Uh, big thank you to everybody watching. Please hit the like. Please hit the thumb up. It does do us a, a big favour. Wayne Bennett. Can't be with us live, so he sent us a message on Facebook. Thank you, Wayne. Um, he says, afternoon, mate. Not going to be able to watch tonight's show live, but I wanted to ask you guys if you have any news on Mike Ashley starting legal proceedings against Amanda Stabley. Now, this was something that was posted, of course, in the Daily Mail, I think, or Sunday Mail, or one of the two. Craig Hope certainly uh, um, was was pushing it about. Um, anything on that, lad? Anything as to what it could be, or is this going to be a slow burner, do you think, Steve? I think it's a slow burner. I mean, it, it, to me, it's obviously nothing to do with Newcastle United because they're not being mentioned. It's nothing to do with PIF because they're not being mentioned. It's nothing to do with the Ruben brothers because it's not being mentioned. So it's obviously something that went on between Mike Ashley and PCP stroke Amanda Stavely. Um, and that the fact that there's nothing else coming out tells you that's how watertight this particular situation is. 
there's nothing leaking from the club because it's a it's a private matter between the two, whether it was financial, whether whatever it might happens to be. Um, I was as surprised as anyone when I saw it in the in the paper. And when you did read it, you saw that there was actually nothing to it. There was no substance behind mm. the statement other than, you know, there's something going on. And that was it, you know. As Bob Dylan would say, something is happening, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Mitch, it's, um, oh, yeah. it does leave a sour taste in the mouth, Mitch, because, you know, the guy's gone. We've all moved on. Is this just Mike Ashley having a little bit of a, <laughs> you know, I'm still here and, you know, I can still Mike, make your lives, I can still make your lives a misery? Mike Ashley's one of the most litigious people in the country. Ask anybody who's infringed any of his copyrights or his brands. Simple. Um, I've seen people say, was it to do with taking down the Sports Direct signs too quick? Um my opinion would be that would have been against the club, not uh, Amanda and Maydad directly. If you remember going back through the accounts, way back to the first time that uh, proceedings were started to try and get the takeover done, there was a charge levied from, um, I think it was from Mike Ashley Holdens to PCP Capital and it was never clear what it was about. It was it something to do with the initial deposit? Um, is he doing something like he wants interest on it? Yeah. You know, it, it, it'll be, it'll be something in note. But to him, it'll be worth a few million quid. And so he'll do it anyway, because that's what he's like. He's quite litigious. Um, in fact, more than quite litigious. And is very um, contract based. That's why he, it's why he wrapped Rangers up in nuts for years, you know, uh, because of the way he, he does his business like that. So that's the only thing I can think of in existence that I've ever seen directly between a Mike Ashley entity and a PCP Capital entity. Yeah, if he thinks um, it's in the right, Mitch, then he'll 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 pursue oh, he'll pursue absolutely. That sort absolutely. Of thing? You know, he's it's aggressive. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Bite and bite and bite, and that's I think you know I think that's Rangers fans saw saw that. Um, Absolutely, fans. If he ends up getting Derby County, um, because it'll be the same sort of thing because it's it's the nature of the man. Um, it's the mm. nature of the billionaire who thinks he's in the right, who will do everything he can to prove it. Not just by yeah. statements, but by actions. And the only actions that those people think that they can win is when they when they take someone to court and fight them that way, because they yeah. they reckon they, they've got the bigger, deeper pockets. That's that's the nature of them. I don't know who uh, put it round yesterday that we're all off to Saudi. We did speak about it last night with me, uh, with me, Superman and Gibbo. Uh, Mr. Midnight's going, Craig Hope reporting we're off to Saudi. So I, I wasn't sure where the story yeah. came from. It just broke last night when I was on air, as as things often do. Um, for the mid-season training camp, obviously when we've got that break, expecting the few to be off the charts when that makes it to the national media. Now, it did go wild last night, um, that Mitch. I mean, have you heard anything like, in the Middle East about this? Is, is that right. Has it been cemented? Because Eddie Howe today said they will be going somewhere on a break, but nothing's been confirmed yet. I uh, spoke to Chris McCarty from Dubai Eye Radio today, um, and it looks like there is something being set up to take them into Riyadh. Um, it wouldn't surprise us, you know, because this is one of the things Stu said a long time ago that would happen, and he was almost poo pooed for it. Um, it's they want their club in the region to generate excitement about it. It's as simple as that. They want to show a, they want to show it off, and and the best way to do that is to stick a training camp in the Middle East. Which is what Liverpool did in the seventies. Man United did in the eighties, and that's why they're so bloody popular out here. It's exactly the kind of things that you should do. Um, it makes sense again, knowing how football support works in this region. So it, it, it makes sense for it to happen. It looks like it probably is going to happen. Um, I haven't had anything totally hundred percent confirmed, but that's the way it's leaning, and. Uh, um, I'm now already contemplating how I can get myself across there for a couple of days. Yeah, I bet it'll be fantastic, mate. It'll be great for for you know for the supporters out there, and hopefully Al Walid and you and, and Stu etc can you know can get across and see the team and see the lads. It'll be uh, 
be absolutely fantastic. Like so, um, fingers crossed that happens. Watch this, uh, watch this space, I guess, and see how uh, how that develops as well. Uh, what about Connor Cody? Asks Colin. Any contact there? Not to our knowledge at the moment, Colin. Um, obviously, I speak to different people all the time, and uh, that doesn't seem to be anything that's progressed. And um, that could be one for the summer, of course. And and we seem to be actively chasing centre half, Steve. And I, I guess you know we just have to have faith, like we said last week on the show. Let's just sit back and relax and enjoy being involved in this because you know we we you know we're clearly making bids for some pretty pretty you know decent players and what will be will be and like Mitch said earlier on the wages that we're offering and stuff like that it's uh you know what we're at the table and, and and Eddie Howe said at the game the day we are still actively involved in the market we've just got to be we've just got to sit back and enjoy it haven't we for the moment yeah absolutely and I, I mean I'm hearing anecdotally that from from people in the club uh and people who know various players that the players are excited and when you hear that players are excited about a transfer window, about incomings, not outgoings, uh, that for me says an awful lot about the squad because the whole, just like the fans, the players are, are, are you know, hanging, waiting for to see who's coming in and some of the names that are getting bandied about. And Connor Cody was one. Um, we've seen other names that you've already mentioned. Uh, the lad from uh, that Santos, was it? Uh, Carlos, um, the, the, the other lad um, from Lille. You know, these are names that are exciting the squad. So that when the players are sitting there going, "Hey, have you seen who we've been linked with?" This, this is this. If this has legs, this could be fantastic for Newcastle United, and also for some of them, it'll be fantastic for them because they can see how the how the the squad can grow, how that you know more talent, more competition, and yes, they're all professionals, so they know that some of them will be impacted by the players that are potentially going to come in and it might mean that they move on, but they understand that. And I think that's what's really good about a squad. Um, when when you hear that a squad's excited about who's co- who potentially could be coming in, that tells you they're not worried um, and they're more concerned in terms of the club itself than they are from their individual uh, situation. And I think fans need to start to, to get a handle on that and understand. Because as soon as you mention a player, then... There's so and so's coming in, so and so's coming in, a striker, a midfielder, a central midfielder, a wide man, or a, a, a fullback, or a, a central defender, or a goalkeeper. People immediately go, Well, that's him out, and that's him out, and that's him out. So we seem to be, because we don't know the certainty, we seem to, be, seem to latch on to, Well, who's that going to impact? Who's that going to impact? Well, th- th- there's. It could impact any one of a number of players, but the squad don't seem to be worried about that. That's what I'm hearing, or certainly certainly member certain members of the squad aren't worried about it. So we should we should be just sitting, waiting, seeing what's happened. Um, it's this it's it's not a roller coaster that we're on. It's just a journey that we've taken that we've never been on for 14 years, if not longer. So it's the excitement and the build up and and you know eventually. As, as Mitch says, when it comes to the end of season, there could be some really, really big name players. You talked about some of the players that we mentioned. That you know the, the faces, the, the two that the, the two that I've been told that were were really, really um, good options, and people were not convinced. One of them was from Tottenham, and that was Harry Winks. Um, I was told from a very reliable source that there was a strong interest in Harry Winks. People immediately went, oh, well, he plays for Tottenham. Tottenham, there's no way Levy will sell anybody to us, blah, blah, blah. You just have to listen to what Conti's saying about his current squad. And it's he's, it reach, it's going to reach the point, I think, where Conti's going to go, you know what, if you're not backing me in the transfer and you're not listening to who I want out and who I want in, then I'll walk as well. And that would give Tottenham an even bigger headache. So you've always got to take those in, those situations into account. And the other one was the the Real Madrid midfielder that I put up yesterday, which was Luka Jovic. Um, everybody thought I was talking about Luka Modric, but I wasn't. Uh, the Gale Platt photographs of Luka Modric were uh, not from me; they were from somebody else. Um, I get I get enough stick with photographs coming up of, of me without being so they being putting photographs up of other people or mock ups. But uh, the 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 Jovic one and the the Harry Winks one were the two ones that I was told from people who are football agents or have been football agents were were potentials. Um, as I say, potentials, and you know, sometimes you know, uh, there's there's no smoke without fire, and sometimes, as as I heard, uh, 
a number of people saying on a number of shows you've done over the last week, Steve, that just because we're being linked, there's a, that means there's an, could mean there's an awful long way to go before they actually turn in uh, wearing and standing there with the scarf or the black and white strip on. But Newcastle are interested in a whole host of players, a whole host of players, and professionally they'll be going through the certain players that, that that are just unavailable, certain players that they just can't get over the line and. I shouldn't have said that. That's, I'm going to get roasted for that phrase, aren't I? And there's certain players that that you know fit into what what we're looking for. Um, and I, I, as I say, this is the this is what we've just got to do. We've just got to rule with it. And when we put names up, it's not because the names that we're making up or we're going through a list and sticking a pin in. It's we're hearing from fairly reliable sources, not somebody who has just sent us a message. Um, you know who you meet in the pub. That's 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 the nature of of what we've been doing and what we've been trying to just explain what we're hearing from the from the reliability side of football in fans. Mm -hmm. Any sign of tune tips there? Oh, no, just an empty chair. Yeah. Yeah. Empty chair. Uh, he's a part timer, that lad. Part timer. Yeah. No no sign of him at all. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, okay, on to one of our first features. Okay, the DI Met, where we ask you to send in photographs of players, uh, managers, uh, anybody else who you've met from Newcastle United. And this one came from Paul Foster. And this was fantastic. He did send a message on Insta, but uh, I'll read it out because you'll struggle to read that. And I'll show the pictures as I'm reading. Um, but he just goes, hi, mate. Hope you're well. I wonder if you could help uh, for, when I, for when I met on Three Amigos show. My mum and dad applied for me to be a mascot at St. James's Park, but it wasn't possible. Instead... We got a private invitation to magical Benwell facilities. A uh, great day for the family before all the Maiden Castle uh, open training. I met Peter Beardsley, the Geordie Messi, notice his keeper gloves. And uh, yeah, I did. I must have been before the West Ham game, the 8-1 thriller. Um, he played in a goal half the session. Maybe the West Ham away game in mind, uh, a la Alvin Martin. That was also some proud day. He was announced in the Mexico 86 squad for the World Cup. Proud days. Gaza being Gaza, just class crack and looked after us, plus the road I shuffle on the training pitch. I hope this can be shown. It was great times from Paul Foster in Chilton and his Ferry Hill Mags. And he also said, there were no junior mags back in them days and I was part of the uh, Neil MacDonald fan club. Fun <laughs> times them days. He also, uh, he also also says, could we please dedicate the photos uh, to his dad, Harry Foster, who passed away on the 5th of December. So that is for your dad, Harry Foster, Paul. Thanks for sharing those great photographs, mate. Some wonderful memories there. And I'm sure your dad's looking down very, very proud. Uh, this is from Patrick O'Dell, Hartlepool friendly, back in the day, uh, with uh, a very young Lee Clark there. And this one from John Stratford. Hi Steve, happy new year to you and all. Sorry to contact you this bit, but don't have Twitter and can't upload to YouTube. But here's one. Uh, the day I met Patrick Clivert at St. James's Park, take care, Straffy. Uh, and that is uh, your uh, day I met. Get them into me at Twitter and I will uh, endeavour to get them on the show. <laughs> Okay, we've just lost Mitch there. Some technical issues at the uh, the gaff that he is in tonight. But Dave Emerson asks, uh, Eddie uh, says, Sean Longstaff has a long-term future at the club. What is your views? Um, Steve, the Longstaffs spoke about it on a few shows over the last few weeks. I mean, Sean Longstaff had an absolute stinker last weekend, mate. Um, he was he was awful. Um, and he hasn't, he hasn't really covered... Uh, covered himself in glory since he came back. And I've put a lot of that down to lack of fitness, 
the fact that he probably got rushed back. Some people don't recover from cruciate ligaments as quickly. Um, I've, in fact, I've probably laid out more excuses than, than he has for his poor form. But I, 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 you know, don't work with him. I don't work with him on the training pitch. I don't see what he's doing in training. Clearly, Eddie Howe sees something. Um, and he's, with, with regards to Matty Longstaff, he's not had a chance to see him yet. So he's not featuring. He says he hasn't really seen him train yet. So what's your views on the Longstaffs? Is there a future for them or should we be looking uh, to, to move them on? I think there should be a future for them. That's the first thing. I think there should be. Whether there is a future for them is probably a different matter because obviously Sean's contract, I think, is coming up uh, to to an end. I don't know whether there's a it's nothing's happening simply because there might be a clause in it that says that it can roll off for another 12 months. I'm just speculating there. But I, I'll rate them both. I, I think they both have had maybe it's mighty limited opportunities. Sean's had opportunities. Yes, he didn't pull up any trees last week, uh, but there was a few others I thought in that team that uh, that heads dropped and and didn't really show the effort that I was expecting. Um, I, I, I like Matty. I don't know whether whether both Bruce and uh, Eddie Howe have yet stopped on on the correct position for for Matty in terms of what he's what he can bring to the team. Um, is he a holding midfielder? Is he a number eight? Is he a number 10? Is he someone who can just sit as a midfielder but just behind a, a, a striking two as part of a diamond? All of those type of questions, I think, are still open to debate when it comes to, to Sean. Um, they've obviously got ability. They've obviously, you know, you don't, you don't get into a Premier League football club and get a contract in the manner that those two lads have done. Um, by not having the the ability, and I think they do have the ability. And I'm not playing on the fact that they're from Newcastle or from Shields or from the northeast that they're local lads that support us. I think that we've got to remember we, we do have we, we keep crying out for using the academy, looking for academy players, looking for quality, and yet when we do get players into the first team from the academy. It seems as though there's a certain element within the fan base that that immediately pounce on them, and whether it's an added pressure that that's being put on and that affects them, I'm not too sure. Um, but I've still got faith in 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 uh, Sean in particular, um, because he's the one we've seen most of over the last twelve to eighteen months. That the, there is a quality footballer in there and a decent lad, and I'd love to I'd love to think that um, in the next sort of uh, six to eight weeks and, and beyond uh, towards the end of the season that we we see the Matty Longstaff and the Sean Longstaffs that were remembered when the when they first broke in to the, into the squad. Um, because it's an opportunity for them. And I think that it also shows other lads in the academy who are trying to break through that they're... That, you know, the, the same thing won't happen to them. They won't have the added pressure and then be pushed to, to one side after finally breaking through. Um, so that's that's my angle on, on, on both the Longstaffs and Sean in particular, Steve. Uh, what about you, Mitch? I mean, Longstaffs, we've spoken about them, as I say, many times on the show before, but would you like to see a future for the guys at the club? Of course I would, but at the same time, there's, there's still questions to answer. If, if Sean... Is a Premiership class midfielder. Why didn't he dominate against uh, Cambridge that day? Um, what happened to Matty when he went to Aberdeen? And and why couldn't he secure a regular place in the midfield? Did were they sold one player and have realised they got somebody else? You know, it, it, and that then comes back to question Newcastle United about what are they telling clubs like Aberdeen looking to loan Matty about what he is and what he isn't versus what he actually is and isn't. Um, I think it's, a, it's to call it a bit of a shambles is an understatement, I think. And it, Sean's form, when he after he did his cruciate, yes, recovery from injury does make a big difference in terms of, for some players, you know, and some players take a long time to get over an injury like that. Um, but, Again, last last weekend he should have been dominant in midfield, and he really wasn't. He was actually a little powder puff at times, and so um, that then leads to more questions against him rather than things in his positive favour. Yeah, it's a disappointing um, factor for me that the two lads didn't quite, you know, hit the heights that they should have. But I think, I think it'll be 
I think it'll be hard for them, really, especially with the players that this mm. new ownership are, are capable of bringing in. So, you know, and they need people who are going to perform. Um, and I think we'll see a midfielder um, come in in this transfer window and potentially more coming in in the summer. I, I think it could be the beginning of the end. But who knows? We'll see. It's up to Eddie Howe. He's certainly got a say, which is more than managers in the last 14 years have had. So uh, we will see. Uh, rest in peace, Bob Swinney. Marty, never yeah. nice to hear about uh, anything like that, mate. And I hope you had a good send-off. I'm, uh, I'm sure he did. Steve Middleman says, rumours have it that all the PIF consortium are going to be here this weekend. I'm not sure where that kind of rumour would emanate from, Mitch, but uh, I would imagine there'll be one game where they would come to. Maybe maybe that will be uh, maybe that will be the case. Maybe it won't. Who knows? <laughs> Any news from uh, from the, the airport down south, which tends to leak <laughs> leak more than a sieve? Uh, nothing, nothing my end. I've got to say, nothing from this end either in terms of movement of various people. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I mean, you would think there's going to be a time when more than just the chairman want to turn up. That wouldn't surprise us. It wouldn't surprise us if it wasn't tied in with the uh, with going shooting at uh, Sheikh Mohammed's place in Northumberland at the same time. That's for sure. That would be one one thing you could see a lot of them coming in for because they do use Sheikh Mohammed's lodge in Northumberland quite a lot. So. Um, that would be an easy way to fly under the radar a little bit and disguise it because I think they'd have to disguise it. Mm. Uh, I think you'd see a level of security in Newcastle Airport that you've never seen before if if a, if a great number of them wanted to come along. Um, but there's nothing concrete that I've heard as yet. Okay, Dave Avery says if we sell the players in the window, can we ask those players to come back and play in that in that game? <laughs> See, yeah. this is the kind of thing that Ralph Hassenhul or whatever he's called doesn't really look at, Manny. You could spin that round, Dave, though. You know, what if we signed players and we sold players and then he insists on some of the ones that we've sold coming back to the detriment of the ones we've sold as well? You know, it's not just getting rid. Hassan is just off his rocker, man. He's does it, I mean, it doesn't apply to owners, does it? <laughs> An ex-manager. No, we, we, we don't have where, to have the same owner. Well, well, where, where do you stop it? You know, do, do you suddenly want, uh, you know, your yeah, yeah, oldest former living manager in the dugout? Exactly. Where, where, where do you go with it? Um, did, did Kevin Keegan say that uh, Andy Cole couldn't play against Man United for the rest of the season or two seasons or anything like exactly. that? Exactly. It's bloody really stupid, yeah. man. Honestly, he wants to take a chill pill and relax. Jeff Willock says, what about last season when Southampton postponed a game last season and signed Minamo from Liverpool at the end of the transfer window and he played in the rearranged game? People in glass houses. Exactly. I knew there'd be somebody who would come up with something like that. Okay. There we have it. Can, we, can you send that to some journalist and ask them to put... Put, tell him to put that in his pipe and smoke it. Dave Emerson says, if he scored in the last game, he'd never be allowed back in Gateshead, talking about Andy Carroll. Uh, Mark Earlham says, Steve, I managed to get Watford tickets. I'll be up there tomorrow for the first time in over 10 years. Let's hope for a win. Mark, get yourself to the Dog and Parrot, 12 o'clock. Me and Super Mac are on a bit earlier tomorrow because uh, he is going to be working at the club doing the barracks. So if anybody is in the uh, barracks, get yourself... Uh, in there nice and early as well and Super Mac will be there from about half 12 but he'll be in the Dog and Parrot at 12 for free kids welcome and we'll do canny food and canny beer Electric Dream Machine says I worry that Watford will drop to five at the back and invite us to break them down if we couldn't break down Cambridge how will we break down Watford because we've got a centre forward and our formation will be different my money and when, if Toon Tipster bothers to turn up, because we know he's a bit of a part-timer these days, um, if, if he bothers to turn up, I'm going to ask him for the odds on Joe Willock getting the first goal tomorrow. Because I think Joe Willock is going to be the boy tomorrow. I think we're going to see a man-of-the-match performance from Joe Willock. That is my prediction. Don't, and I think it'll be down to the formation. I think it'll be down to the fact that we've got a big man up top who, can, who knows where the back of the net is. And I think it'll be because the formation will suit him better. Let's see. But that's my that's that's where my money is going tomorrow. We'll find out uh off Toon Tipster later on. Um if Newcastle at two or more goes up against Southampton, players should take turns sitting on the ball, like Kenny Morton did against <laughs> Luton. Really? Anybody at that game? Yes. Yes, <laughs> I think you mentioned that on the retro show. You'll be able to watch the retro shows back in the playlist. It finished yeah. this week, but you talked about that, didn't you, Steve? What did he do in that game? Well, it, it, it was one of those games where, you know, the, 
it got the point where they were just strolling the ball around, knocking around, and, and, and he wasn't that type of player. He wasn't the sort of player that would take the Mickey out of people. He was a, he's a, a solid professional. I think of, of all the of all the players at that particular time, he, he went out and he did a job. But it just so happened to just stop the game. Uh, there was a little incident. A couple of little incidents went on, and uh, he st- he stopped the game and he sat. <laughs> He just sat down on the ball, just plunk, and then got up again, and it was just comical. It was just comical. It was, it was one of those things. It was just, it happened so quick, you know. Um, but uh, I, do you think, do you think we'll see somebody sitting on the ball tomorrow? <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, I really, really doubt it. But um, hey, you, you never know. You never know. It's, uh, it's, it's what makes this game of ours uh, really exciting to uh, watch. Okay. Um, I just want to mention the Nick DeMarco T-shirt. Um, I am going to put another T-shirt up for the food bank today. Um, but the Nick DeMarco T-shirt um, went for £250 Ooh. to the food bank. So a big thank you to George Hayes once again. Uh, George didn't want the T-shirt because he lives in America, uh, lives in Houston, and he basically put the bid in, put the money in, and said, if anybody can outbid him, uh, then um, you know they can have the T-shirt. He's not bothered. So he's put the money in anyway. That's great. £250. Thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. The one I'm going to put up uh, now is this one. Okay, this is a print and a one-off T-shirt from terryneeshow.com. And that is a wonderful montage of different strips. Um, So you get the print and you get the T-shirt. So I'm going to put that on Twitter now. All you've got to do is find the pinned post at the top of my Twitter, at Steve Wraith, make a bid, and we will uh, announce the winner next friday so get your bids in for that lovely piece of artwork lovely piece of uh artwork indeed and a nice t-shirt a boot uh, so it's a double whammy for you get yourself on to uh to twitter in about five minutes time and i will stick that up thank you very much for that john from q deck and thank you to terry for making such a kind donation uh to t- colin thinks that the legal action might be over the fact that amanda didn't pay for the indian meal that time in london <laughs> Nothing would surprise you. Nothing would surprise you. Well, I wouldn't, not with that guy. Tom says Mike Ashley was going to take us to court due to us taking the sports direct sound, which seems to be the, the feeling among supporters. But Tom, that isn't being confirmed. So you'll just have to wait and see. Chris Collins from Arcot Interiors um, just got beat on FIFA off me nine year old. 3 uh, 1. He was Newcastle and I was Watford. Get your house on it, he says. <laughs> right. Thanks for that, Chris. Uh, Tune have the highest bid in for Bayern Munich Sewell as per Sky Sports. The fact we're bidding for players like this blows my mind. And Mitch, that is a that is one really which has just come about in the last twenty four hours. Um, again, we've been linked with this player before. Paper talk mm. is what I would normally say, but you know now it's not paper talk. This is genuine attempts to buy players. This isn't triggering a triggering a. Um, a, a, a bidding war for, for the likes of Wayne Rooney back in the day when we just bid for him just for the sake of bidding for him. You know, we had no intention of buying them. We're, we're bidding for these players with the intention of trying to get them into Newcastle United. Mm. And, and again, it comes back to uh, being able to dream a little bit and having the back end of people who that really want to make a go of it. And, and chucking bids in for real top class European players. Now, I don't expect them to come off this window. I think what will happen is, we secure a secure premiership status, then summer's going to be absolutely mental. If you think this window's been crazy so far, the summer's just going to get really ridiculous. And all we can do as fans is sit back and enjoy it, and, and enjoy the ride, really. Um, they look like they're not going to be taken for mugs. Uh, they look like they're going to want to deal properly, but equally, they're making shrewd signings about the players we need to get out of the trouble we're in. And so, a player like that will be icing on the cake. I mean, imagine bringing somebody like that in now. I just can't see it happening in this January window. I think that'll be one for the next window. It's interesting, though, Steve, with that one, because he was one of the first players that were linked uh, way back in, in early December. And then it seemed to go cold. It seemed as though mm. the, the player was making 
making waves that he wanted to leave. Then all of a sudden the player was staying. Then you were hearing press talk that the, the player wasn't interested. And then all of a sudden it's reappeared again. So there's, there's either there's somebody in the press playing around and just latched onto a name again that, that, that has been sort of, as I say, in the ether, uh, in the background, or they've heard something more substantive, whether it's come from an agent or whether it's come from the player side in, in Munich or wherever. But it, it's interesting that it was it was apparently dead as a dodo, and now suddenly that name's reappeared again. Very, very interesting. Pro- pro- definitely one to watch, I would have said. Yeah, definitely one to watch. There's no doubt about that. Um, it's just been great, and I, and I can see just from the chat tonight how ups, you know how delighted people are with you know the amount of business that Newcastle are attempting to do, and um, you know we're going to have some downs, we're going to have some ups and downs. You know, Lewis Digner, of course, going to Villa rather than Newcastle, but hey, he said he didn't want to come. That's fine. He didn't want to come. I'd rather have a player here who wants to play for Newcastle um, as opposed to somebody who. Uh, who doesn't, you know, and that that's that's fine. We will we will find another full back at some point. Uh, Steve Middlemas says, Do you think season tickets will go up? Uh, you know, there's a lot to be decided. I mean, a lot of people asking whether there's half season tickets coming out. I mean, of course, there, there's been nothing, there's nothing on sale after Watford. So I would imagine the club will announce something in due course if there is, but I have not had anything confirmed yet. Um, Paul Rocket again going on about Ashley and Amanda. Is it not Ashley upset about what Amanda said that she could not take? A picture with the sports direct signs being all over. Maybe it upset him. It might have done. He says that's the kind of person uh, that he is. Dave said he's never been as excited since the Keegan days. This is another one. Michael Gilchrist touches on. Donny Van, uh, van der Beek from Man United would be a great loan signing, he says. I've had this conversation with a few people today. Some people would love to see him in, Mitch. Other people don't rate him at all. I think he's a good punt on a loan. And Eddie Howe did say that he'd be exploring the loan, uh, the loan market as well as the permanent market. Worth taking a gamble on loan on that guy? Um, that was the, for me, was the significant statement at that press conference was, you know, the, the steering towards talking about that player. And then he said, yeah, we might, we might explore the loan market. Um, you've got now to lose in terms of a loan with someone who's not getting game time, doesn't seem to be happy. Um, is is no doubt a talent. And, and so why not? I, I think that's, Certainly a, a punt I would take. Definitely. What about you, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking about a player that cost over 45 million quid and was wanted by many, many clubs, uh, not just in the UK or in, in England, but in Europe as well. And he went to Man United and it just hasn't happened. I don't know what was with Solskjaer. You know, buy a player and then not play him um, and literally not play him. Leave him sitting there for months, uh, barely got a look in, ba- barely got off the bench. Um, and it's it seems as though he's now he's now at the point, and, and we know that you, you just have to listen to the press, that there's all sorts going on at Manchester United in that dressing room, isn't there? Um, you know, there seem to be so many players and so many messages coming out about people who are, are either disrupt developments or um, rocking the boat or just unhappy with the whole atmosphere. And he must be one of those players because he hasn't been getting a look in. And I would say, you know, take a punt at him. Um, he, is a, he is a very, very good player. A very good player. And probably would do a fantastic job for us if he was given the chance. Uh, I've just been given the news, um, which, uh, you know, I, I, obviously I don't catch up with social media whilst I'm doing the show. Keith Patterson has left £200 in on that Nick DeMarco T-shirt. And then George um, Hayes, Houston Mag, has put another £250 in on top. So that T-shirt, the Nick DeMarco T-shirt, has actually raised £700 now. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Brilliant. So thank you, guys. Seven hundred pound is is absolutely crazy. Um, beyond our wildest dreams that we would get anywhere like that for a t-shirt, and uh, that is amazing. So thank you so much for that, guys. Thank you very much. Amazing generosity. Shouldn't surprise us really coming from Newcastle fans, but uh, that is a fantastic gesture. So I've deleted that tweet. I'll have to put another one up now just to uh, to rearrange that uh, around. So anyway, big thank you to our sponsor, Spider VPN. 
for all your internet security, Google Spider VPN, the other boys to trust for protecting your computer from nasty bugs and glitches. And a big thank you as well to skipsandbins.com, telephone 0800 25 45 email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, website www.skipsandbins.com, easy contact free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks also to LNG Family Funeral Directors, 0191387245. And to Garden of Healing Dispensary, CBD, Hemp and Cannabinoid Specialists, www.thegohd.com. Thanks to Arcot Interiors. Big shout out to Chris, who's in the chat tonight. Uh, for all your kitchen needs, go and get a new kitchen uh, on Heaton Road. Uh, and you can Google Arcot Interiors. They, too, come up at the top of the Google search list. Thanks also to qtechshop.co.uk, the makers of pool tables and snooker tables and Walls End in Newcastle. John is in the chat as well. He's also the guy who does our website, nufcmatters.com. Uh, thanks also to John at Jab Signature, jabsignature.co.uk. And thanks to Media Arts for doing all of our videos. If you are a first-time visitor to the channel, then please subscribe by hitting the Newcastle Legends logo in the bottom right-hand corner. Another 200 new subscribers this week. So all you need to do is hit the Newcastle Legends logo, and that is it. You have subscribed. Hit the thumb up. Very, 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 very important. 725 of you watching. Only 149 of you have done this. Please, it's a big help. If you are watching on your computer or watching on your phone, hit that little thumb under the video. Let's try and get it up to 200 at the very least tonight. It does do us a big favour with the algorithm. Thank you very much. Uh, click share to share to your other social media. Share it to Twitter. Share it to Facebook. Newcastle United groups, whatever. Just get it out there and tell people that you enjoy the show and they might too. And drop into the comments box to speak to like-minded Newcastle fans or pose a question. We try to get through as many as possible. We're also available as a podcast. So if you're out in the car or out for a walk, you can listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean and the rest. This little phone QR code takes you straight to NUFC Matters website. Join the cult. This takes you straight to the membership pack. Tonight we're having a monthly draw. Two tickets for the Platinum Club for the Brighton game up for grabs. So if you are a member of NUFC Matters, you've got a chance of winning two tickets tonight. So get the QR code, get your camera over that on your phone, and that takes you straight to the website, nufcmatters.com. Buy a membership pack, which is a one-off fee of £25, and you enter the monthly draw. We have a monthly draw, and uh, we give away some great prizes. So two tickets up for grabs. Platinum Club for the Brighton game tonight. The draw will be at seven o'clock. Be there or be square. Uh, we also have uh, an evening, uh, an afternoon, sorry, with Peter Beardsley coming up on the 30th of January at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House, which is on Westcott Road in Newcastle. Tickets are available on discount sites, voucher and on Groupon. Cracking day that's going to be. Peter's going to be interviewed by Mick Lowe's. Uh, I'll also be doing a little spot with Supermac and with Gibbo. And there'll be quite a turnout, I would imagine, as well, from the NUFC Matters crowd. Uh, so get yourself along. Uh, should be a good afternoon of entertainment. As always, the food bank will be situated outside St. James's Park tomorrow for you to make donations. If you can't get to the match or if you live abroad, you can still donate via nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk's match day bucket. Simply jump on to uh, that website and you can make a virtual donation today. Don't forget as well, I am at the Dog and Parrot with Malcolm tomorrow at the earlier time of 12 o'clock. So get yourself along at 12 o'clock. We'll be there pre-match and we will be there after the game as well. We've got some great stuff and uh, nufcmatters.com is the website. Uh, these I Am The Resurrection Joe Linton hoodies are up for grabs and the Filthy Rich Mags. Uh, hoodies as well just a, a rough idea of what we've got we've got some great t-shirts some mugs some cups some whatever on there get yourself on to nufcmatters.com and uh, order today and uh, i found the nick demarco t-shirt that is the t-shirt that went for 700 pound amazing absolutely amazing thank you so much for your generosity george and to keith and of course to um John as well. So big, big shout out to the lads. That's a, a great amount winging its way to the food bank and uh, really, really pleased. Alastair Legden, 
Uh, he says, I'm quite relaxed about transfers. We know that the new owners want what we want. Gone are the days of being hacked off uh, that we did manage to get Hamza Chowdhury and the like. How are the lads? Yeah, a lot of people referencing Hamza Chowdhury, yeah, uh, Steve. Um, it's so funny, isn't it? Poor lad, you know. I mean, he didn't he didn't play a foul, we didn't sign him. Um, and and he's the one that we that we now mark up as the sort of like that's the benchmark, you know. And the benchmark of mediocrity, as some people might uh, might describe it. I feel sorry for the lad. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the, 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 the quote there, or the little the little statement there is absolutely spot on. We're not in that sort of ballpark anymore. Um, when it comes to, to potential signings, we're, we're beyond that. And that's the exciting bit. And that's what's keeping me going. That's what's, the, the, you know, the fact that we're just being linked. The fact that we're a club who can go out and buy quality players, um, quality players that are available and possibly quality players that suddenly become available because their clubs want to do business for, with us um, because they see the benefits to themselves. Because that's the roller coaster, and then that's the merry-go-round that football is. The money just swills around and swills around, and now we've got a pot of it, and people want to be part of that. They want it. They want their bit. They want their bit of the football sort of little segment. You know, it's like a get big orange, and they want this segment. They want the, They want as many segments as they can because it's 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 been dire for a lot of football clubs, particularly clubs in Europe who have struggled. And Mitch keeps saying, you know, the likes of Lille, you know, a 35, 40 million pound bid for one of their players. Suddenly that helps them for the next two years uh, in terms of keeping that club afloat. So it, it, this is this is the merry-go-round and it's it's great to now be part of it on the plus side and not the negative side, Steve. Yep, phone is overheating, Mitch. I've just got your message. Oh. I've, been, I'm, 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 I've got fingers on all kinds of buttons tonight. I'm bloody dealing with this teaching, carry on, etc. So, uh, yeah, is your phone okay now? I could barely pick it up before. It was ridiculous. Christ. <laughs> Anthony Emerson says, Big Chris Wood will have a Mighty Quinn debut tomorrow under the legend in the making. Um, let's so. let's so. remember, as long as he gets one goal and we win, it's the winning goal, that's really all I'm, I'm bothered about. I've got to be perfectly honest. Let's hope so. Uh, Michael says, Mitch, that poster behind you, I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. In fact, I'm adamant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, uh, on to our next section, which is Tweet of the Week. <music> tweet of the Week, where you send us uh, your tweets, your pictures, whatever. We pick a few up as well off the internet and um, can't get through them all tonight. I've been inundated with tweets this week. Zara, in particular, sent us about four, and I just, I just, I genuinely can't squeeze them all in. And it really depends on when I load things onto the system. You can only get a hundred pictures on the system, and um, generally, I have to make sure that I've got a fair balance of everything. So, apologies if your yeah, tweets haven't made it. Some will, some won't, and I, I, you know, it's been one of those weeks where there's been a hell of a lot of content. Let's let's be perfectly honest. So, um, first off, we'll start with Elliot Slessor, um, who comes up with these weekly jokes, Steve. Yes, my wife is throwing me out because of my only fools and horses obsession. Uh, I bet I fetched the suitcase from the van. Oh, Elliot, are we? <laughs> yeah, Elliot, you get definitely going to get a regular section. Uh, loads of these flying around WhatsApp. Um, I did like this one with all the uh, parties at um, uh, at Westminster and government. Um, Thomas Party has crossed out, and he's now called Thomas Work Event. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant that. Um, this one uh, from Daddy Ben Salman uh, great show chaps and I just love this um, he sent this last night and it was just nice to get a, a tweet of somebody who'd enjoyed the show he was doing a little bit of promotion for us by sending the WhatsApp uh, the, the, the YouTube link out as well but just that photograph brilliant of Malcolm with his hands up uh, Gibbo laughing um, as they're predicting hopefully three points tomorrow yeah. brilliant Gibbo as well Sir Gibbo, yeah. Uh, this one uh, from NUFC 360, Steve? Yes, <laughs> and this is synonymous with everything that's going on with uh, with Burnley, isn't it? You know, and the manager and the meltdowns, just like everybody else. But uh, NUFC 360, and there's Ant and Deck doing a little comedy bit with it. Now go and sign Tarkowski and send him a little message out. And I think that's fantastic, you know. We've seen a few of the mucked up ones like that, but I think, yeah, that's the, that's that's really going to stick in people's throats. And this one, Steve. 
Yes, uh, this one again. This is from da uh, Daddy B uh, Bin Salman. Uh, and Gibbo, surely NUFC in a relegation battle, we will need superheroes. And you look at it, and we've got Botman and Robin. Mitch, you've started something here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one was quite good. Uh, this is from Adam. Is Chris Wood and Marked waiting for St. Maximum to look up and put a cross in? It's <laughs> so right. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, We've been that, seeing it for weeks now. <laughs> this one, this one follows in the same vein, but a bit more optimistic. Yeah, I, I like this. This is it. This is the the two cats. <laughs> Trip, you're putting the cross in, and Wood getting on the on the end of a header, and just uh, those little photographs, just absolutely comical, brilliant, well done, whoever sent that in. Um, and this one from Irvin Welsh. I thought it was a work event, volume 106, number 35. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Irvin. <laughs> Give Irvin Welsh a follower. Like, he comes up with some absolute beltless. He does, mate. He does. Uh, now, I've had some cheeky chocolate in the past. Uh, when this company first started up, um, they sent me some of that cheeky chocolate. And I'm not sure whether anybody's ever aware of it. Um, they contact me on Instagram. And basically what they do is they piece together wrappers of different chocolates and make swear words. Uh, they've now broached into cards. And as you know, I, anyone who watches this regularly, you might have noticed that I, 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 me and Steve take turns sometimes on this. And I'll hand back to Steve for this one because I, like I do like to see Steve struggle when something, something inappropriate comes up. Oh, God, what we've got here. Congratulations on the birth of your new baby. Our thoughts are with you. At this difficult time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes, cheeky chocolates have broached into uh, oh, cheeky cards hey. now. Um, brilliant, that. Absolutely brilliant. And they're, they're, they're top people down there. And they're a, lo they're a local no a local firm. So, get, get yourself in, uh, into them. Pewster. Absolutely brilliant. Walls and Mac using this photograph of Sean Day shouting through the metro window just made us chuckle uh, and a few other people to boot. Um, this one was from Gary Webster, of course. Uh, Minder, good pal of mine, who's an Arsenal yeah. fan, Steve. Yes, uh, good lad as well. Uh, in this transfer window, if I was NUFC, I would buy Liverpool FC and use their players as a feeder to get the tune out of the bottom three. Is that allowed? <laughs> After yesterday's performance against Arsenal, I think uh, I'd start questioning whether we wanted Liverpool squad, especially with unless the, unless they we're going to throw in Salah and Marnie when they get back, man, Steve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Doctor Squad Pump put this up a few weeks ago. New Kevin Keegan statue unveiled. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like the one that's been mocked up by Mike Ashley, I think. <laughs> it, it's got a look of him, man. It has got a look of him, but I, yeah. Yeah, I forgot to put that up. Tune of Mr. Trick, yes, said Sean Robinson. Deal done. 54 year old Kayoshi Murka uh, has signed a deal with fourth tier Japanese club Suzuka Pond Getere to continue his playing career. Yeah, 54 year old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well played him for keeping his Wouldn't body in there. Uh, 54 in the Sunday League, I can tell you that. <laughs> definitely not. Um, let's get back. Let's, put, let's get political again. It was a Cobra meeting. Yes, and there's the bike. There's yeah. the box of Cobra waiting for him. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely classic. Uh, this one was good from Cape Toon Mag. I don't know who you are, but I will find your release clause and I will trigger it. <laughs> 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 They're getting really knocked about this release clause as well, aren't they? You know, God, if they're not wanting to not play players, then they're getting knocked on that. This one's yeah, a good and, one, Steve. Andy found this one, Steve. Yes, uh, pleased to see the NUFC matters is branching out. I'm gonna have, to have words with John, he's gonna have to get some. This looks like a lovely bottle of Wrath or Wraith wine. Yeah, it's Wraith, Wraith wine. wine, Wraith wine, fantastic. I mean, we'll speak. We'll, we'll go directly to our connoisseur in-house drinker, Mitch. Yes. Have you had any of that? I haven't, but I'll check with Andy when he's back from the Philippines, where he got it. Well, obviously that's in the Philippines. Um, but I'll tell you what, what the story behind that is when he's back over next week. I think. Yeah, can you ask him to bring me a bottle, um, and I'll taste it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. I'll pay him for it. I'll pay him for it. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, but that's. I can, I can hear John's uh, mind. Like yeah. his cogs in his mind turning now. I love this because we got a lot of negativity last week from fans that were showed on tweets. But Scott James um, said 63 92, St. James's Park. 
Newcastle United nil, Cambridge won an unbelievable ground in an unbelievable city filled with the most welcoming football fans you'll ever meet. A weekend I will never, ever forget. And there was loads of them on Twitter, by the yeah. way, from mm. Cambridge fans. Um, and we welcomed them to the Dog and Parrot. Uh, we, we, you know, we had a laugh with them before the game. They had a laugh with us after the game. But you know what? It was great. That's what football is all about. Um, and it was a cup dream for them to come here and do what they did. And I wish them all the best in the next round against Luton. Uh, BBC Five Live. I just I put this up because they completely missed the point. Yeah. Um, shout out to the fan who brought a BMX for sale banner. I mean, come on. You know, get up with a program, BBC Five Live. You know, everybody knows what that banner's about, and uh, just, 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 just typical BBC, just not doing their research. Yeah. Dave, I know you're in the chat tonight, mate. Well done on this one, making tweet of the week. Uh, he says, Keith, have you bought yourself a new toy? <laughs> <laughs> that's got oh, Keith oh, Patterson brilliant. written all over it. In brilliant. fact, that's him flying it. I'm sure. I'm probably, Definitely. Probably. Um, this was after the Cambridge game. Uh, somebody commented on my uh, a bit of promotion for my book. He just put change the title. It's a, a for nightmare. Every boy's dream. Uh, every boy's nightmare. The Cambridge game, of course. Uh, this was from John in uh, QTech land. After calming down, let's look at the positives from the Cambridge game. He said, "Yes, <laughs> nice blank bit of paper. That sums it up. <laughs> a blank bit of paper. Yes. Uh, this one uh, was really good from um, from Dan Harrison. I've I've got to put it up uh, a little bit closer. When breaking news, evidence of foul play by NUFC over playing Southampton emerges. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen this, lads, but it was a letter, uh, and it just says, "Dear Premiership, Newcastle can't play against Southampton because he is poorly uh, with." Rona virus, and he has f broken his leg. <laughs> fell off his bike. Uh, and fell off his bike and broke his leg. <laughs> Thanks, Newcastle's mum. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. A lot of time and effort went into that There's letter. A few of us sent notes like that to school <laughs> at certain points. In time. <laughs> Pete, Pete Redden, a uh, good shout out to him. He does a lot out in the Middle East. Uh, Steve, yeah. this was quite funny. Yes, this is a this is a good one. As a Sven Botman currently downloading Vera and Spender as we speak, bring him home. Mm. <laughs> you could be right. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Got this one was sent to us. Yeah, as I, this one was sent to us by you, Steve, on um, on WhatsApp. Club statement: The football uh, club Gillingham, I think it was, have released the following statement. Gillingham Football Club confirm, can confirm that the contract of manager Steve Evans has been terminated by mutual consent with immediate effect. Yeah. And then the tweet that you sent us was this. Yes. Can someone ask him if my husband can have his Gillingham merchandise, especially his bench coat, as the Jill's shop doesn't do his size, but Steve's would defo fit him. All the best. <laughs> oh, dear me. The bloke, the bloke hadn't got out the door and she's after his gear. Pretty <laughs> hilarious. Um... This one was a song suggestion. Now, I would have kept this for Holly's show because I, I, I badly sang the Kieran Trippier one. But this one, he's like thunder. He's like lightning. The way he scores goals and frightening. We've got Chris, Chris Wood to the song Knock on Wood. Yeah, oh. we good. Like that one, lads? Uh, no, no, we'll give that one a miss. No, didn't like it. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, Paul. Doug at the corner. This was a good tweet. 50 years of watching the Castle United Football Club home and away, not a sniff of silverware, then suddenly a very bright light appears at the end of the tunnel. Like I give a flying fuck what Gabby Abonglaho thinks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's not the only one who's had a pop with Gabby Abonglaho. No. No, definitely <laughs> not. Um, nice to see this, Steve. Welcome to the cult, mate. Good luck tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, 15 minutes to go if you want to join the cult yeah. uh, by... Uh, Go to the website. Uh, you could be in the prize draw to win two tickets for Brighton in the Platinum Club. Ugly Camel uh, sent this one. Uh, party. I don't know, Jeff, is there? I saw them all drinking, Jeff. I just thought it was a business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely one of Zara's. So I definitely yep. got one of Zara's in. So she'll be happy. Um, Mag fan. Uh, this one, Steve. Yes, perhaps the Cast United should be allowed to re replay every game they've played this season using the team that they should have had in the summer. If their legitimate takeover had not been dragged out for 18 months. Hey, if if everybody else can call it one way, why can't we call it that? Spot on. Absolutely. Let's go for it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Chris Cook says, I've been to some bad parties, but none so bad that I thought I was at, uh, at a work meeting. That's true. <laughs> um, I did love this. 
Lee Ryder gets a bit of stick, mate. Uh, Newcastle trying to break down the yellow wall, he said, against Cambridge. Andrew replied, we're playing Cambridge, not Dortmund. <laughs> well the done. yellow wall. Um, Andy Fez uh, bringing people into reality. Uh, good lad, Fez runs a great bus. Uh, and UFC to the morning oddballs. Find me a player who scored 50 Premier League goals in 128 starts that's fought relegation for the last four seasons and has also got into double figures the last four seasons. It's a no brainer for me where we currently are. Talking about the signing of Chris Wood when a lot of Moon and Minis were having a, a pop. And. Uh, that one is in the wrong place. <laughs> Hopefully many people didn't say that, but we'll bring that one back for later. And that finishes Tweet of the Week. I was inundated this week. I hope I got through as many of them as possible, but that is Tweet of the Week. It's all about players uh, coming through tonight, lads. And Richard Joblin saying, what's your thoughts on Fabrizio Romana? Is he credible? Seems to get plenty of info. Again, you know, another name in the frame. Um, Mitch, is that a, a, a credible one, do you think? Look, they, they, they all get credible info. And some of the things come to pass and some of them don't. And some of that's potluck about whether the info they've got wind of then comes to fruition or not. Um, I think some are very good at getting between the lines. I think some are very good it making certain connections that then suddenly makes sense. Um, I think some just take out a shotgun and spray it everywhere and see what what name gets hit by the the, the pallets. And um, at the minute, it's so easy to link anybody to Newcastle United, and people are be using that. Clubs are using that. Agents are using that to generate interest in their players. Um, and, and that's another thing that journalists have to decide can I run with this how credible is the info um, and am I going to make myself look stupid if it doesn't come off uh, I think he's one who's quite cautious I think he only runs with stuff when he feels he's got very 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 positive information um, but there's still I'm still convinced there's names out there that nobody knows that we're in for um, I think there's still potential for some surprises in this window. Um, and, and I think they did, there's other news maybe even from within the camp that may come out down the line that, um, again, people might be sitting on for one reason or another. It, it, it must be very, very difficult at the minute to be a football journalist and any connection with Newcastle United is credible. Because you don't know how much money they've really got, we've really got to spend, and so you know, and and I think we've also got to be aware of players and agents being in that position to use Newcastle United the way Emery did during the manager search. That was purely his people, and purely him. Eventually, to get him a better deal at Villarreal, that's what that was all about. Um, and no wonder Newcastle were furious about it, but the way it was leaked and the way it was looked like it was Newcastle was all at fault. Um, and I think that's now what I think a lot of the journalists will be wary of is being bitten by a story like that, rather than going with their gut and saying, yeah, this sounds incredible. Uh, big news coming in from uh, uh, the uh, Twitter sphere, and that is that uh, Nick DeMarco, having seen the tweet that I managed to do whilst uh, still listening to you guys, has topped it up to uh, by three hundred pound for the T-shirt. So that T-shirt wow. is now gone a thousand pound for that Nick DeMarco T-shirt. Um, so Steve, I've put him in touch with you uh, on Twitter, and if you can just let him know how he pays, etc., he will put three hundred quid in. So one thousand pound from the T-shirt, which is fantastic. That's crazy. Remarkable. Absolutely fantastic. I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, just superb. Newcastle fans just shock you continuously, don't they, with their generosity? Um, but that's fantastic. Really big thanks, Nick. Thank you. Yeah. If Newcastle were to raid our relegation rivals, which players would you bring in? I think if we raided Burnley again, get Tarkowski. Yeah, uh, certainly a lot of people saying that. Alan Thompson said this must be the most exciting transfer window in 14 years by a country mile. I just don't understand the negative with some fans with the wood signing. Uh he's a top, top player that will come in and please. Bill just says ditch the crap music. Uh Bill, um a lot of, uh, that's one person said that. 
Um, I'm not sure which music it is. Could could it be the uh, could, could it be one of the, the the theme tunes? I've got no idea which music it is, mate. We always listen to the customer, but uh, sometimes the customer is wrong. But some people saying the music is dreadful. What music? What music? Do you think how we'll play four four two tomorrow? If yes, would you play ASM up top with uh, Wood? Okay, Steve, what formation would you play tomorrow? Um, four four two. <laughs> Simple as that. Four four two. I've got it written on my pad here for later. I've I've made my selection. I normally don't do mm-hmm. it, but Mitch and and Stewie and I were talking early, and I I actually sent them what I thought was a decent team, and then immediately pointed out that I've missed Joe Linton off. And I went, how could I miss superstar Joe Linton off me list? I can't kind of believe it. So I've actually written my team down this time. I've gone back over it. I've looked again. I've thought about it a little bit more, and then I've stuck Joe Linton in. And it's 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 a four four two. That's the formation that I've that I've gone for, um, kind of. Let's wait till we'll, we'll get to the point where we talk about the the teams itself and and the personnel later on. But uh, yeah, I think it's it's almost a four four two. Um, it's not one of these four two two twos that seems to have a recurring two after it. If you if you're Manchester United or a, a Chelsea that that continually plays a four three three, but you're not too sure whether it's a a, a five two one 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 god knows whatever um i think in in newcastle situation i think in, in, it goes for the rest of the teams at the bottom of the league i think you you go especially to them you go with your attacking prowess and you go with a solid back four because that's what we're used to seeing and that's what most players are used to playing and then uh you you have a tight midfield that has the ability to pull left and right when needed and you have and you have target men and people that can you can have target man to lay the ball off to. So four four two for me. Okay, it's a DI map music. People hate it, apart from Rachel and Mitch. Rachel and Mitch yeah. love that music. Yeah, I like that music. I thought he was talking about your singing, actually, Steve. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Mm, no, he didn't say singing, which is great. Um, Tom Tom says, agreed, the day I met is really ill-fitting. It's really dark-sounding. So there we go, Ooh. says Tom. There we go, dark. I don't like it either. So I, I guess I'll have to change it. We just can't have copyrighted music on. That's the problem. Right. Otherwise, the video gets struck, and then it goes, and then people who want to catch up miss it. So yeah. I'll have to ask Neil at Media Arts, who has a busy busy life at this moment in time, and I've got him doing a couple of other things. Um, I will ask. Oh, yes, Trechikov. I've just said I love the music for the day I met. It's only... It's only 30 seconds of the show. It's only 30 seconds of the show. I will... D- look, I'll, I'll try and find something else. I prefer the old music, but then the other music... Um, it, the other music was a nightmare. Um, what? It's not music. That's the problem, says Bill. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's bad uh, in itself. It's just not right for the feature, says Tom. I get you, Tom. I, agree. I, I much prefer the old music. Um, but unfortunately, it was copyrighted, and it didn't get copyrighted until like till later. So, you know, like you know, we've done about eight shows. There was no problem, and then you know, lo and behold, it, get, it got copyrighted, and the thing gets taken down. So then I had to take it out. I'm going into too much detail here, but at least you all realise uh, that T-shirt we've just put up. By the way, the one that's been donated is up to hundred pounds. Dunnell has already donated. Um, he's putting in hundred pounds, so that's it. Junior turn, Junior Turner music, Steve W. Tom. Um, I'll have a look, mate. It's got to be stuff that's not copyrighted and, you know, we will get something. I can't use Daydream Believer. It's copyrighted, Colin. Um, anything like that is copyrighted. So it's not, 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 nothing that I can use there. Okay, uh, 35 minutes to go. Um, and, well, we know we know that Toon Stato has chipped in today. I just, let's hope that Joe bothers his backside. But we'll go with Toon Stato first. Hello, amigos. What a massive day tomorrow. It's a debut for Chris Wood as well, and a couple of stats on him. He has 50 goals in 155 games in the Premier League, which makes him a one-going-three-games type of player. And he's only one of a few elite players who has a double-digit number of goals in the past four seasons. 10 in 1718, 10 in 1819, 14 in 1920 and uh, 12 goals last season. He still won three goals this season so far, so he needs another seven to keep his uh, stats intact. 
Out of his 50 goals, he has only one hat-trick. And the last player to debut with a hat-trick for Newcastle was Mickey Quinn back in 1989. He also has one goal against Watford and one goal against Newcastle in his record. Watford, the opposition, believe it or not, we have a negative record against them in the Premier League with only three wins, all of them coming at St. James's Park and all of them coming by one goal margin. While uh, in total, Watford have five wins, two at St. James's Park and three at Vicarage Road. And as you all know, we have a lot of 1-1 draws, five of them in the Premier League years. When it comes to clean sheets, Watford haven't had a clean sheet since their famous win against Liverpool back in February 2020, like two years ago, when they uh, ruined uh, this fantastic uh, run by Liverpool. And uh, we should be able to score. Their last clean sheet away from home was January 2020 against Eddie House Bournemouth when they won 3 0. So Newcastle should definitely be able to score. The question is, is it going to be enough to win us the game? Away the lads. Great stuff, as always, from Toon Stato. And um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play the music and we'll just we'll take a gamble. Uh, I'll look an idiot if he doesn't come on. Um, but let's let's hope that Toon Tips does or that he's backside. <laughs> Yeah, no. yeah. What's it? Oh, oh. Oh. Hello there. Now then, how are you doing? Well, where have you been? Oh, where haven't I been, mate? Where haven't I been? I get, I'm like the wind. I get everywhere. <laughs> How's life? Happy I New know. Year. Uh, happy Happy oh, New happy Year. New happy year. Christmas and Happy Birthday. Um, it's that long since we've been on. And happy anniversary and happy um, whatever else that we can say. Happy, happy too. Happy talk. Um, listen, mate, it's great to have you back. I know you've been busy and uh, obviously Christmas, New Year gets in the way, but work has really taken over. We're only joking. Um, great to have you back and great to get your uh, tips. And I'm sure you heard us when I was when you were off air before um, with regards to what I'm looking for. But give us your usual script, mate, and then we can have a, have a chat with you for the next half hour. I was expect a new year. I was expecting some sense out of this show, some decent football opinion, and you reckon Joe Willock's going to get man of the match. Jesus, something's never changed. So, I tell you what, I've been off longer than Paul Dummett, but now we're giving daft contracts out to money-hungry has-beens. I thought I'd better put my boots back on and show a bit of willing just in case Eddie and the gang can't get the Phil Jagielka deal over the line. So much has happened since I was last on, I wouldn't know where to start. Football-wise, we're still in the bottom three. We're out of the FA Cup. Wilson's knackered. Maximin hasn't got a clue what to do with the ball when he's in the box. And we're going back to the high court to argue with a billionaire over a skip. So, yeah, V for the revolution, Mags. I've been telling you what, for four years that if we let the Saudis in, this was going to happen, but you wouldn't listen. On a positive note, I finally met the wonderful Mr. Mitchell and his daft mate Penman for a Christmas drink of 14. It's been a long hangover this, Mitch. I even ended up in hospital at one point. I know you did, you daft sod. I convinced a tipsy Mr. Hasty that J7 is miles better than a prime Patrick Vieira. And most shockingly, I did. And most shockingly, I nearly lost my spot on matters last week to some bloke called Salvador. Ordinarily, losing my spot on matters would really upset me and I'd come out fighting. But on this occasion, I'm more than happy to walk away. <laughs> you get out, Steve? Anyway, moving on, moving on. We've got a match tomorrow against the Hornets in what is a real 19-pointer at the foot of the league. Now, I don't know if the lads at the Bookies are still recovering from the New Year Sherries, but listen to this. Newcastle United are even favourites to win a Premier League game of football. So double your money's available if you think we can grab the three points. Watford are 13-5, and that's the same price for the draw. 
So there's decent profit to be made, no matter which way you think the result's going to go. Goals are fancied at 8 to 11 for over 2.5. Both teams to score is well fancied at 4 to 6 and 11 to 10 if you think there'll be a nil. Newcastle 1 0, 17 to 2. 2 0, 11 to 1. Mr. Penman, 3 1 is 16 to 1. And I'm going wild this year, and I think we'll win 4 2 tomorrow, and that's 50 to 1. If you think Watford will do to us what everybody else does, 1 0 is 12 to 1. Uh, 1 0 is 12 to 1, as is 2 1. 0 0, 12 to 1 also, and 1 all, 13 to 2. Big Chrissy Wood is favourite to score any time at 13 to 10 and 28 to 1 if you fancy him to get a hat trick. Joe Willock and J7 come next at 2 to 1, and ASM is 5 to 2. And as I said, for anybody daft enough to think Joe Willock will score first, you can have 7 to 1. And if you think he'll get man of the match, I'll personally give you 25,000 to 1, Steve. Josh King is top of the list for Watford at 2 to 1, with the dangerous Emmanuel Dennis coming in at 13 to 5. As long as he's recovered from his mystery, I'm not going to the African Cup of Nations bad leg. And if you think Trippier will ping one in over the wall, you can have 12 to 1. In terms of the food bank, even though I've been off longer than the Northern Line trains from Newcastle Central to, from, to Middlesbrough, uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to add to the 85 quid. And now Patterson and even Nick DeMarco are making me look daft. So this week, we're on it. We're getting... Chris Wood and Newcastle, Chris Wood to score any time and Newcastle to win is going to be 12 to 5. So the money's on for that one. In terms of the tune tickle, I'm going for every Premier League game starting tonight, lasting all the way through to Sunday to have at least 1.5 goals in them. And that'll be 18 to 1. There's definitely going to be some goals around this weekend. Very quickly, uh, just in terms of... Island and, and the odds. Botman is still favourite to die for Newcastle at 4 to 11. Todd Cantwell is 8 to 11. And interestingly, Anthony Martial from Manchester United is 2 to 1. So we'll see uh, a big win coming up. Gamble safely, everybody. Please, please don't chase your losses. And can I just say, uh, just to pass my condolences on to Mr. Harrison's family, obviously, I wasn't around last week. Uh, wonderful gentleman, and he'll be sadly missed by everyone at NUFC matters. So there you go, and thank you, gentlemen. Great stuff, Joe. Great to have you back. And uh, yeah, big um, big um, thing happening tomorrow at the match as well. The club have sanctioned uh, uh, a tribute to Dave, so I think there's going to be a round of applause and a picture going up with Dave, which is fantastic. Oh, so uh, keep an eye out for that at the game tomorrow. We'll come back to the game and have a chat with the lads um, uh, before the end of the show about the game against Watford. Uh, we've got to cram in one of your favourites. Toon look alike which has just gone mad again this week. And uh, starting with this one, uh, I can't remember who sent this one in, but uh, this is a look alike of Chris Hall comparing him to the Paddy Power owner. There's a little bit of Chris Hall in there, lads, maybe. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, Paddy yeah. Power owner called Paddy Power. And maybe <laughs> Dr. Squat Pump sent this one. Nobby Solano watching in the crowd. Now, they do get better here. Uh, I mean, that, that could be absolutely anybody. I've got to be perfectly honest. Um, this one was sent as a like some kind of reference to the Chris Wood looking old. Um, yeah, it's not the Chris Wood, and he's got an S on the end of his name. But uh, again, it deserved a mention. This one was from Tim Cairns. He says, I thought this was Mr. Hasty. It's Andrew Jennings, the journalist who exposed the FIFA. <laughs> he's pretty, that's pretty good, that, Steve. He could be a distant cousin. Steve's frozen. Uh, he's got, he's frozen. His internet's packing in. Um, okay, this one um, has, has done the rounds. Um, that's that's the doctor of television and and Chris Wood, of course. Um, I, I had about four or five people, four or five people send us that one. Uh, this one was from Wayne Bennett. He says, "Look alike for Friday's show: Sean Dyche and Phil Mitchell, who's back on the drink. As Sean will be after Wood signs for us." Um, <laughs> 
which is good. Um, this one was sent last week by uh, John. I was trying to think of a lookalike for this, but nobody springs to mind. There's only three <laughs> Steve Hasties in that photo. Uh, um, this one uh, was from Alan. He goes, didn't know you three used to be in a band. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, Hasty, and Mitch getting hammered on that one. Absolutely. Uh, which, which, which is good. Uh, this one was from Peter G. He says, Tune look like the animal edition. Sorry, <laughs> lads. Um, obviously, I can make out Mitch and Hasty. Like, I'm again not sure which one's me. Uh, that's got to be me. The pug, I guess, is me, is it? Steve Wraith oh, yeah. is the first one, maybe. Jordy Dennis is the second one. Penman's the third one. And the fourth one is, is uh, Steve. Uh, I, the cat looks nothing like me. Absolutely nothing like me. He hasn't even got a beard. Um, this one was from Mark Byers with Ray Parler fifth from the right in the back row. I didn't bother focusing on him. And he went in a short Steve Wraith, second from right back row. So he got the beard. <laughs> looks more, it looks more like that little guy on uh, Game of Thrones, I thought. Um, Sam Chipperfield, uh, pick of Steve Hasty from the 1980s revealed. You like that one, Joe? He loves me, Sam, doesn't he? He does, he just picks one out. Uh, Tamuri Ketspire and John Joe Shelby. Yeah. Both got bald heads. It's the, it's the bald thing again, isn't it? There we go. Should we send that one in? Ben Fogel and Chris Wood. Ah, uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I can see that one. Uh, Sunderland's manager, uh, Lee Johnson, and <laughs> not oh. sure who that guy is. Doesn't look well. Doesn't doesn't look well. It's from, it's from a carry, ca carry on film or something, isn't he? He's from Riot. Um, <laughs> Graham Coleman. <laughs> says, Hi, Steve. Harry Maguire. Two look alike. <laughs> That's good. That's, I, I was sent that a couple of times. It does look like Harry Maguire. Um, this one was from Chris A. Um, obviously, our very own Andrea, Toon Stato. And is that Eddie Hall? No, it can't be. I'm not sure who that is. Yeah, it is. It is. Is it Eddie Hall? God, he's lost Aye. some weight. Aye. He's done well. He's done well since he wrapped in World's Strongest Man. I'm sure he used to have a bit, a bit of a kite. Um, hooray! Well, Toon, uh, Toon Tipster sent us this one in, but so did Chris. Um, it just says, is this a dog in harness or is this Steve Hasty? I didn't, Steve. Steve, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Um, coming down to the uh, the final ones now. And we have this one from Mark Byers. Toon lookalikey, Tino, and a miracle civil rights activist, John Lewis. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, uh, yeah. Good one. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we had this one, Ian Hull. Been a while. <laughs> <laughs> the late lady, but the gentleman that is Steve Hasty and the late great Rick Parford. He called you a gentleman, Steve. He did. He called us a gentleman. I've got a pal who actually did look like Rick Parford. But uh, <laughs> Rick Parford. Um, I missed. I missed this one last week. Rich Joblin says, "Tough Christmas for Mike Ashley. Had to dust up the trumpet and support Jules Holland's band." I sent this before, but it can still be used. Um, uh, you still can't believe it's not him. It does look like Mike Ashley. Yeah, it does uh, Mike. Play, play, That's playing the trumpet. Now. Um, this one from Jeff Carter look alike Chris Wood and Shaggy from Scooby Doo. <laughs> was, that his, was that his surname? Shaggy Rogers. Rogers. Um, <laughs> hey, that's the first time I've come across that surname for him. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it wasn't like I, I, I beg to be corrected, I stand to be corrected. Like, um, Chris Wood and Michael Dawson, yeah, I. Yeah, I'll see that one as well. Okay, we're coming into the uh, the final furlong again. And yeah, we're coming into the top four. Sam San Diego. Uh, okay, okay, just hear me out. Am I the only one seeing this? Eyebrows, maybe. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a, got potential, that one. Okay, this one, definitely. Sean Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> He's 17's Brian Harvey and a dog's arse. <laughs> at what point of your day do you look at a dog's backside and say, that looks like Brian Harvey from his 17 when he was singing Stay Another Day? <laughs> Mitch? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of uh, later on in the day, I think, is the. <laughs> yeah. Uh... 
Anyway, well um, done. We, well done we, don't, we don't want that to stay another day. Um, onto this one. Oh yeah, we've had that one. So the winner is from Sutty. <laughs> yeah, boy. Two and look alike. Football journalist John Gibson and the man who played R two D two, Kenny Baker. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Brilliant. That is good. That is frightening, mate. That was a really good one. So you've kept Steve Hasty off the top spot for another week. Yeah, well I'm done. Well yeah. done, all concert. Okay, as you know, we always have uh, the qtechshop.co.uk uh, monthly quiz. Uh, where you get a picture, you need to write the answer down uh, each week. And then when we get to the fourth one, uh, those four clues tend to give you uh, the answer to a question. And then we've got a prize for you. Uh, so there is picture clue number one. Ooh. Write your answer down. And once you've got that, we will have another one next week. So on to the members draw. And uh, this is for two tickets against Brighton in the Platinum Club. Uh, we will pick a number out. So if you are a member of Newcastle United's uh, NUFC's cult, sorry, NUFC Matters cult, uh, your winning number uh, might come up and you might win those tickets. Here we go. game you've got two tickets and uh, well done g miles you've got two tickets for the brighton game number 23 g miles uh i'm sure john will have your contact details and he will get in touch with that is g miles number 23 has won two tickets for the brighton game uh well done to you okay watford at home and uh, newcastle united's uh six pointer uh, it has to be said it's a three o'clock kickoff the game is sold out and uh, a 2-0 defeat for Norwich, of course, at West Ham on Tuesday night means that Newcastle remain in 19th spot going into this game. However, a victory over Watford tomorrow would see us climb above them and get out of the bottom three as Burnley's home meeting with Leicester uh, has now been called off due to COVID. As I mentioned already, I will be at the Dog and Parrot with Malcolm a little earlier tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Having made his Magpie a, a debut in the FA Cup game, Kieran Trippier is expected to play tomorrow against Watford. Uh, and as I mentioned last night, he'll be the 248th player to do so in the Premier League. Chris Wood, we would expect, having got him across the line early enough, should be number 249. Callum Wilson and Isaac Hayden are both unavailable due to injury. Fernandez is yet to come back to training. Jamal Lewis and Paul Dummett are back in training, but they're not expected to be in the starting lineup. Uh, news on the availability of Dwight Gale, Kieran Clark, and Fabian Shaw. Um, I didn't catch that on the press conference. Did anybody else? Because I'm not sure what's happening. The cells was back training. Javier Manquillo um, is obviously serving a one match ban. Uh, so, big game uh, tomorrow. Who is the referee? I hear you ask. And it is. Paul Tierney. And of course, he is the Lancastrian official who took charge of Newcastle's only win this season to date at home to Burnley. Is that a good omen? Let's hope it is. VAR, Jared Gillette is the man on there. There is no TV coverage uh, per se. Uh, so if you're not going to the game, um, you'll have to rely on the radio or some dodgy stream. Uh, OK, Steve, we spoke about it a little earlier. Um, what's your thoughts on this game? How do you see it going? And, you know, it, you know I think Chris Wood's going to play a vital part in this. You know, it, we've got a striker, somebody we can hit. But how do you see it going, Steve? Uh, you're right. Chris Woods has a vital part to play for the next, at least the next eight weeks. If the news that uh, Wilson's going to be out for a long stretch uh, does come uh, true. So th this, this is a defining game. I mean, uh, you said earlier, Steve, you called it a six-pointer. You, you look the reason it's a six-pointer for me is you, you look at the, the next few games. I mean, obviously we've got Leeds at Leeds away, and then Everton and Villa at home, and then West Ham, Brentford, and then the Brighton game. So West Ham and Brentford away, and then Brighton at home, which is a game on the fifth of March, giving the free ticket away there from the competition there. So there's an opportunity here for Newcastle United to start picking up points. 
I mean, you look at those and there's 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 players in there's games coming up where start to put a performance in, start to 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 look and play like a team and get the run of the green that perhaps some of us have felt we haven't had recently. That makes this game so much more important from a confidence level. The fact we've got two new players uh, coming into the team tomorrow, um, and the fact that the momentum's with us as opposed to them because they have been absolutely shocking for the last six games. At least our momentum has has kind of started to 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 slowly move forward, whereas the momentum that any momentum that they've had uh, seems to have gone right off the end of a cliff. Um, it's 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 one of those games where like like always you're going to go in with optimism, and I'm hoping I'm coming out absolutely buoyant by performances right across the park because uh, quite frankly we're due that we're due that from a number of players a number of players uh, that owe the fan base especially after the support that's been given since the takeover that they've started got the the, the 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 excuses can no longer last. And we've got to see. We've got to see the end result. We've got to see when they're getting into, into, into shooting opportunities to actually hit the target. I was in the Gallagher end last week. I think there was more chance of the ball hitting me than there was the ball hitting the back of net at times. Quite frankly, <laughs> uh, when you're putting five or six or seven rows from the front, you suddenly realise that Christ, you're in danger of getting hit. You have you don't concentrate. Um, although, having said that, most of them went way over the top of my head and into, uh, into the into the next tier and if not the tier tier beyond because uh, some of that you know some of the shots that were being that were being fired in um that they weren't with worthy of a park game quite frankly so there's a lot of players in the squad who've now got a you know the excuses are dying away we haven't had a target man x y and z you know gentlemen at the back we've got a target man and we've got to start producing the goods and i think tomorrow uh, is is so important, and that's why you've called it a six pointer. It's it could possibly be even more than six points. Can you have more than six point a game? Is there such a thing? I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm so much sure somebody will tell us. What's the odds on it being more than a six point Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, um, what's your take tomorrow? What kind of formation would you like to see played? Um, you know, and are you confident? I don't. Um... I don't know, Steve. I um I would like to say yes. I'm actually looking forward to the game, um, which is something that I haven't particularly been doing all season. I must admit, I was sat probably opposite Steve Hasty last week, so we had tickets in the Leasers end. Um, and I agree with you, Steve. I was dodging the ball more than their goalkeeper was. So I don't want to see anything other than a reaction tomorrow. Um, never mind a six, nine, twelve, fifteen pointer. I just want to see us bounce back because to sit in that stadium, um, it was flat. The football was virtually non-existent. I thought we were absolutely woeful. Um, and I've had some heated discussions this week with various people about that. I thought Newcastle were absolutely terrible last week. I'll be honest, there was no excuse for it. So um, it was good to see Kieran Trippier. One of the interesting things was he looked like he was three passes ahead of everybody else. The ball was rolling into touch and rolling behind the goal line. And I think Trippy is looking around thinking, well, quality players make that run, you know, and then he's looking around and reminding himself that, you know, he's surrounded by kind of uh, Sean Longstaff and uh, Et al, who again was absolutely woeful. Um, so I think it's a must win. I think the signing of Chris Wood is potentially um, a, a, a mark walk, if I'm being honest. Um, I saw him up here this season play for Burnley and I thought he was absolutely excellent. The ball was sticking to him, which is something that, doesn't invariably yeah. happen with the Newcastle strikers, Callum Wilson included. Um, we look like we can get into reasonable positions. I'm really grateful that Sam Maximin now might have something to hit in the middle, so it might give him an idea of what to do with the football. Fraser was whipping balls into thin air, um, and now we've got a big lump stuck in the middle who, who I'm hoping um, is going to put the ball in the back of the net for us. So, uh, to coin a phrase, um, it's shit or bust tomorrow for me. Um, I, and I think we've got to go for it. I hope we don't sit there and, and, and get a bit anxious and a bit nervous if the likes of um, Shelby's playing, if the Maximum's playing, if, if Trippy is on his game and Chris Wood's there in the, in, in the six-yard box that, that, that we've got a target to hit. Why not? Why not just go for it? So Newcastle United will win tomorrow and they'll win 4-2. 
Okay, good stuff. Mitch? I'd take 1 0 with a deflected goal off of uh, Shelby's backside now, to be honest with you. You know, um, I think it's interesting in the chat there, somebody says that we're all performance, and I think we are. Uh, and I think the squad will be up for that. I think the squad will be will recognise that. I think the other, other element for me is who's available. Um, have we lost any more due to COVID? I know we've got a few COVID cases. Hopefully after the testing today, the there's no more. Um, I've heard a rumour that Dubravka is undergoing a fitness test as well. Uh, um, I heard, heard, heard a whisper this week that he's, the foot injury he had has reared its head again which um, concerns me um, if it's the type of foot injury I believe it was. Which, um, uh, But that said, um, it, it, does that explain some of his he hesitancy this season if he is carrying this injury still? Um, I want to see a, a full-blooded performance. I want to see we go out with, with a bit of, bit of blood and thunder and to really have a go. Um, because like you've said and like everybody's touched on a bit about the ball sticking to Chris Wood he seems to be one of those players who can, who can hold it up and bring people into play <clears throat> and everybody advancing from our midfield will benefit from that potentially uh, in, in a very different style to, to to Wilson and actually the other option we've got down the line is, is him and Wilson together Potentially, which would be an interesting thought. Um, but for tomorrow, he's, he, Howe's got some decisions to make. What formation? Who who goes at left back? Um, and 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 if, for example, it's Trippy Apple across the left back, who goes then in at right back? Uh, I think we've got. I'll be interested to see what he turns out with. Uh, but actually, in terms of the in terms of the game itself, I'd take one 0 with a deflected goal off Shelby's backside now. Um, if if you ask me honestly, though, if we put the shift in like we did against Man United, we should win the game comfortably. It's it's there for us to take, um, and and that's the frustrating thing is we need to see that kind of effort raised against Watford, not just against Man United, not just against Liverpool. We need to see that intensity. And I want to see that intensity tomorrow. And before I forget, I just want to say to, to, to Bradley Mag on Twitter, happy birthday for Monday. Another gentleman who's with us due to the good people who take that time to learn some CPR. So he can enjoy many more birthdays, hopefully, as well. And something else that's that's close to my heart, obviously. Yeah, happy birthday to you, mate. Uh, comes from all of us at NUFC Matters. Uh, just one more to... Uh, to fit in. Yep, Julie, uh, I've got a couple for you. Twins, just for whatever reason, decides to say that I'm delusional. Um, I, I didn't even know what I was being delusional over, um, to be honest. And this one, which I mistakenly showed earlier. Oh, you bold bell end. Tell Gaddusi to sign some more players. This isn't effing good enough. Bob, <laughs> why on earth would you even think that I've got some kind of hotline to them about players? Absolutely bizarre. But anyway, thank you. You both made Troll of the Week. Uh, tonight, nine o'clock, uh, if you're interested in the true crime stuff I do, I've got this fascinating interview uh, about the White House farm murders and Jeremy Bamba, uh, well-known case, of course. Uh, this man's been in prison now for 36 years. Was it a miscarriage of justice? I speak to the two people who've been leading the campaign uh, to try and clear Jeremy Bamba's name, and that is nine o'clock tonight. Well worth tuning in for cracking... Uh, uh, crack and show, mm. and um, I asked them a lot of questions and I got a lot of answers, so well worth tuning in. Uh, there has been a little movement in the schedule as well now that the Retro Show has finished. Mick Lowe's will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, as we look ahead to Newcastle's game against Watford. Um, but that doesn't mean we've got rid of George Mitchell and the crew. Uh, they are back uh, on Wednesday nights in a new permanent slot uh, with a new show, Geordie's here, Geordie's there. Uh, and you will see me, Al Waleed, Stu Penman, Mitch, Steve Hasty, George Mitchell and Steve Wilkinson 
Uh, but this time, we won't be looking back on days gone by. We will be talking about what's going on uh, in the uh, the football world today. So uh, it's going to be great um, having those guys. And I'm sure they'll have recollections and memories of uh, days gone by chucked in as well. But uh, I think the lads are just going to enjoy talking about what's going on, especially your dad, Mitch. I mean, your dad's had yeah. so many memories and stories to share with people. But it's, it's going to be great to hear what your dad's actually got to say about what's going on today. I'm sure you, you'll, you'll delight with all with the intricacies of the throw-in um, amongst other things. Uh, but no, it'll be good good to hear from him and good, good to, to, to see his mind stretched on modern takes as well as probably scattering some stories in somewhere down the line too. Um, I think if anybody uh, feels free to ask any questions of him from modern day to, 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 to way back when, He'd be delighted to, to wax lyrical about it, I'm quite sure. And it'd be, be good to do a new show with him, take a different slant on things. I think the retro show, um, I think we did really well, particularly coping with some of those bloody teams we were chucked out of sometimes. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, thanks, Tom. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, yeah I'm going to enjoy it. I think it's going to be a nice compliment to the other shows that we do through the weekend. Yeah. Nah, it's going to be fantastic. Great stuff. Okay, well, if you want to see Steve Hasty tomorrow, get yourself up the food bank. If you want to see me and Joe, get yourself the dog and parrot. And if you want to see Mitch, get yourself a flight. Take care, lads. Let's hope it's three points. <laughs> see you, guys. Weekend. See you, lads. Bye-bye. Talking to myself again, but it's easy.